Dear learner, in this episode we are going to learn about phase and festivals. Under five subheadings: introduction, Holi and Diwali, Makar Sankranti and Ganesha festival, Baisakhi and Honam festivals, Dasra or Navratri festivals. The culture of a country consists of living style of its people from birth to death. The customs, traditions, beliefs, thinking, practices, behavior with others, their food, dress, etc. constitutes the culture of a country. The type of culture we have inherited from our ancestors becomes our cultural heritage. In every country, there are number of fairs and festivals which becomes a part of cultural heritage of the country. During these periods, the people celebrate it on a grand scale. People meet and greet each other and enjoy. The cultural heritage of India besides our dress, food, beliefs, behavior, living styles, etc. also consists of music, dance, painting, folk arts, fairs and festivals, etc. Different culture is being followed in different parts of the country. In spite of this diversity, still there is a unity. There lies the greatness of Indian culture. Next is festivals of India. Many festivals are being celebrated from the time immemorial. Perhaps its origin can be traced to human civilization, some particular community or area. A few other festivals spread across the state and the entire community. People living in India have different beliefs and faiths. As a result, different types of festivals are celebrated in different parts of the country. In most of these festivals, an occasion is created for people to exhibit their talents in the form of music, dance, drama, paintings, folk arts, sports, bravery, adventure, etc. There are also legends behind many festivals. In most of the cases, the essence is winning of good over evil. <laughs> Second, Holi and Diwali. This festival occurs at the onset of spring. Among India's innumerable festivals, Holi ranks as the most colorful. The festival of Holi is celebrated on the full moon day of the last month of lunar calendar that is Palguna, which comes in the month of March. Although Holi is a very popular festival throughout the country, but it is more popular in North India. It takes place over two days in the Falguna month. On the first day, a bonfire is lit at night to signify burning of Holika. On the second day, known as Dulandi, people go around throwing color powder and pouring colored water at each other. People invite their kids and dear ones for the dinner in the evening legend behind Holi festival. During Daksha Egna, unable to bear the insult, Dakshaini committed suicide by jumping into Homakunda. She was born as the daughter of the mountain king Himavan as Parvati. She started penance to get married to Lord Shiva. In the meantime, the gods were put a lot of hardship by demons led by Surapadma who had the boon that none other than the son who has the power of Lord Shiva could kill him. As Lord Shiva was teaching the path of bliss to sages and Parvati doing a penance, the gods were desperate for the solution. They sent forcibly the karma, that means the cupid, to induce lust in Lord Shiva. Karma has been vested by Lord Shiva to induce lust in all creatures to maintain reproduction as a system. Due to pressure by God, Kama shot an arrow that would kindle lust of Lord Shiva. 
it not only failed to induce lust on Lord Shiva, but the Lord opened his third eye and Kama burnt into ashes within no time. Due to this belief, Kama Dahana takes place in Oli festival. The holy bonfire is in the commemoration of this event. Next is Diwali. This is perhaps the most celebrated festival throughout India. It is also celebrated even in other parts of the globe, wherever Indian communities live. It is India's most important festival of the year. The festival gets the name from the row of clay lamps that Indians light outside their houses to symbolize the inner lights that protect us from spiritual darkness. It comes in the 8th month of lunar calendar that is Kartika month. It symbolizes the victory of good over evil. It is also known as the festival of lights. It is celebrated with family gathering, glittering clay lamps, festival fireworks, flowers and sharing of sweets. It is a common practice to lit oil lamps in each house and in all public places. Lakshmi Puja, the goddess of wealth, is also performed during this period. The celebration of the festival is practiced by all Indians irrespective of their religious faiths. This festival symbolizes unity in diversity as every state in India celebrate it in its own way. Next is Makar Sankranti and Ganesha festival. This festival of Makar Sankranti coincides with the beginning of sun's northwest journey when it enters the sign of Makara which is called Uttarayana. It falls on the 14th day of January every year. This festival is celebrated as a festival since the time of Aryans and is looked upon as the most auspicious day for Hindus. The evidence of this festival is found even in Mahabharata when Bhishmacharya waited for 14 days to leave his body, that is to die. It is believed that when person dies on this auspicious day, he liberates himself from the life cycle of birth and death. Next is Ganesha Chaturthi. It is another important festival celebrated throughout India. It falls on the fourth day of sixth month of Hindu calendar that is Bhadrapada. Lord Ganesha is the elephant headed god and is worshipped first before taking up any work. It is believed that any work will be completed without disturbance if is prayed first. Late Lokamanya Balagangadhara Tilak gave a social dimension to this festival. He used it particularly in Maharashtra to mobilize public opinion against foreign rule. It became a part of independence movement. People of all faith joined together to celebrate this festival. Even today, it is being celebrated throughout India. Ganesha is also considered as the destroyer of pride, vanity and selfishness. He is the personification of material universe in its various magnificent manifestations. Next is Baisakhi festival and Onam. It is one of the major festivals of Punjab and mainly celebrated by Sikh community. This auspicious festival Baisakhi is celebrated all over India under different names and different set of rituals and celebrations. It coincides with Rangoli Bihu in Assam, Nababarsha in Bengal, Putandu in Tamil Nadu and Puram in Kerala. For the large farming community of Punjab, Baisakhi festival marks the time of harvest of Rabi crops. For the agriculturally rich state of Punjab and Haryana, Baisakhi marks the time of 
harvest of rabi crops and therefore extremely significant for the farmers. This festival is also celebrated as Thanksgiving day in these states. They thank God for the bountiful crop and pray for the good times ahead. They celebrate this occasion by performing various cultural programs. Cries of Jatha Basaki rent the skies as men and women break into Bhangra and Gidda dance to express their joy. Baisakhi festival has tremendous religious significance as it was on this day in 1699 that Guru Govinda Singh, the 10th Guru, laid the foundation of Pantakalsa, the order of pure ones. Baisakhi festival falls in the first day of Vaisakha month, that is normally in the month of April or May. The people of Punjab celebrate this festival with exuberance and devotion. Colorful Baisakhi fairs with a number of cultural programs are organized at several places in Punjab to mark this festival. Next is Onam festival. It is the biggest festival in Kerala. Onam festival falls during the Malayali month of Chingam that is in August or September and it marks the homecoming of legendary king Mahabali. Carnival of Onam lasts for 10 days. It brings out the best of Kerala culture and tradition. Intricately decorated pukalam that means beautiful and colorful flower decoration, vanasadhya which means a variety of delicious meals, breathtaking snake boat race and exotic kathukali dance are some of the most important features of Onam. It is also treated as harvest festival in Kerala. One of the most marvelous facets of Onam is the unfolding of its rich and well established culture. We can see a whole gamut of it in the 10th day long carnival. Pulikali, Kaikotikali, Kumatikali, Kathakali, Tumbitullal, besides several folk arts and traditions can be seen during these days. The beauty of the festival lies in its secular fabric. People of all religion, castes and communities celebrate the festival with equal joy verve. Onam also helps to create an atmosphere of peace and brotherhood by way of various team sports organized on this occasion. It is a pride of the state. <laughs> Next is Dashara celebration. The word Dashara or Dashara has its root in ancient Sanskrit language which means remover of bad fate. It is a festival of reverence of good and its power to subdue evil. This exhilarating and inspiring festival is celebrated by Hindus across India and is known by different names across the country. It is also being celebrated in Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh, Malaysia and other Southeast Asian countries wherever large number of Hindus live. It is also known as Navratri and the 10th day is called Vijayadashmi. According to Hindu mythology, it is believed that Lord Rama killed demon king Ravana on this day. Significance of Navratri India is known as the land of colorful and vibrant festivals across the world. Here religion and spirituality are inseparable part of the social as well as cultural fabrics. Every festival celebrated by Indians has a deep meaning, reasons and significance attached to it. The revelry pomp and show are all joyful aspects of the festivals, but 
the core concept remains the traditional values inculcated from one generation to the other. Navaratri is one of the most important and significant Hindu festival celebrated in India. During this festival, people pray to goddess Durga as she is believed to be the representation of positive celestial energy. Each of nine days of Navratri is dedicated to the worship of different forms of the benevolent mother goddess. Next is worship of goddess Durga. Durga represents divine mother. She is omnipotent power of lord and cosmic energy. The divine mother represents as having 10 different weapons in her hand. She has three attributes of nature namely sattva which means birth, raja which means living and tama which means death. The first three days of Navratri are dedicated to goddess Durga, a warrior incarnation of the supreme mother. During these three days, her power to vanquish all evils and vices is venerated. On each of these three days, three different incarnations of Durga is worshipped. On the first day, the goddess is prayed in Kumari form, which signifies her in the form of a girl child. On the second day, she is worshipped as Parvati which is a personification of a young woman. On the third day, she is worshipped in the form of a Kali, which symbolizes a lethal force and will to destroy all evil. Worship of Goddess Lakshmi It is believed that after three days worship in Durga form, a person attains victory over his or her inner vices like ego, anger, lust, fear, etc. And only then he or she can move forward to attain spiritual wealth. Thus, Goddess Lakshmi, who can bestow spiritual and materialistic well-being of the devotees besides giving prosperity to them. She is worshipped from fourth day to sixth day. On the seventh day, Mother Saraswati, the deity of learning and wisdom, is worshipped. On this day, all learning instruments like books, musical instruments are worshipped. This ritual signifies that wealth and wisdom should go together. People pray to her for true spiritual guidance and purity of mind. On the ninth day, which is known as Mahanavami. Nine girls or kanyas who have not attained their adolescence are worshipped with great devotion. These nine girls represent the nine incarnations of Divine Mother Goddess. Thus, Goddess Mother in the form of Shakti represents the cosmic power of God which does the work of creation, preservation and destruction. The worship of Goddess Shakti reconfirms the scientific theory that energy is imperishable. It cannot be created or destroyed. It is always be there. Next is Regional Dashara Celebration. It is a widely celebrated festival in India. The exuberant and vibrant festivals of Dashara are celebrated in many different ways across the India based on the various regional and cultural legends attached with it, since India is a magical land of diversities. In North India, Dashara signifies the triumph of good over evil. Ramlila plays depicting the life of Lord Rama are performed for 10 days. It is a great cultural festival in different parts of North India for all age groups. On the 10th day, the final battle between Lord Rama and Demon Ravana is shown, wherein Demon Ravana is killed by Lord Rama. The effigies of Ravana is burnt with lot of crackers and other items. 
the reunion of Rama and Sita takes place. This colorful place inspires people to live a life of righteousness and teach them to understand the value of life. In East India, in most part of the eastern region, Dashara is celebrated to mark the victory of goddess Durga over a most powerful demon Mahishasura who had become so powerful that he started ruling not only earth but even heaven. As per the legend, the entire world was tortured by his mighty demon whom even gods could not defeat. Then they prayed Shakti and the most powerful deity mother Durga was born. It is believed that after a ninth day long bloody battle with the demon killing many of his comrades like Chanda, Munda, Nishumba, etc. On the tenth day, the mighty goddess Durga Devi killed Mahishasura. This day is celebrated as Vijayadashmi day. On this day, the huge colorful idol of Devi Durga is taken on a long procession with great reverence and grandeur and submerged in rivers or seas. Although there is a great increase in the social and cultural rivalry during Durga Puja, one should not forget that core essence of the festival is its religious values and teachings that have been passed on from generations to generations. A person can feel the true spirit of India, its culture, religion and history by being a part of mesmerizing festivals of Durga Puja which is one of the most significant festival celebrated in Eastern India. In Western India, in Maharashtra, Dasara is celebrated and it is related to various interesting legends besides that the Lord Rama. On the day of Dasara, Apta tree is worshipped and its leaves are gifted to near and dears along with sweets which is considered a good omen. Another interesting legend associated with the origin of Dashara is related to the most revered Hindu epic of Mahabharata. After losing everything in the gambling with Kauravas, the Pandavas had to go on exile for 12 years and one year of living in disguise. For 12 years, the Pandavas lived in forest, but for the final years, they had to conceal themselves from all their divine and powerful weapons. This was a great challenge as they were well known throughout the country and posed a great hindrance for their incognito status. Therefore, Pandavas hided their weapons under Shami tree which was located near the residence. As soon as the period of disguise was over, the Pandavas went to Shami tree and retrieved their weapons after worshipping the tree and their weapons. It is believed that this day was the 10th day of Ashwayuja month according to Hindu calendar. Hence, this day came to be known as Vijayadashmi. Since the Pandavas were trim foot in completing their exile. Since then, people hug each other under Shami tree and exchange its leaves on Dashara. In Southern India, though all the states of South India celebrates Navratri, but in Karnataka, it is celebrated on a very grand scale. Perhaps no other state in India celebrates Dashara on such a vibrant and grand scale as in Karnataka, especially in Mysore. It is a spectacular cultural ex extravaganza of the entire state. It had a royal patronage well over four centuries. The unfolding of different dimensions of culture like music, dance, drama, poets, wrestling, sports, paintings, folk arts, etc takes place on a very grand scale. Artists of national and international repute are being invited to give performances. After the royalty is abolished, the government of Karnataka is celebrating it as Nada Habba, 
that is state festival. Next is other festivals under that Buddha Purnima. It is also called as Buddha Jayanti or Vesak. It is a day to celebrate Gautama Buddha's birthday, his attaining enlightenment and Mahanirvana that is the death. For people of Buddhist faith, it is the holiest day. They spend the entire day in temples praying, reading and listening the holy scripts. It falls in the full moon day of third month that is the Jesta month according to the lunar calendar. Next is Christmas. It is an annual festival of Christians celebrated all over the world commemorating the birth of Jesus Christ on 25th December of each year. In some countries, 24th December is also celebrated as Christmas Eve. Normally, it is a week long festival culminating on January 1st. Ramzan Eid Ul Fidr. It is the end of month long fasting by Muslims all over the world. Communal prayer is arranged and they listen to Kutbah. During this occasion, charity is given to poor people. It starts on the first day of the month of Shavi. Next is Bakrit Eid Ul Adha. It is also called Sacrifice Feast. It honors the willingness of Ibrahim to sacrifice his son as an act of submission to God's command. Conclusion The culture of a country consists of living style of its people from birth to death. The customs, traditions, beliefs, thinking, practices, behavior with others, their food, dress, etc. constitutes the culture of a country. What type of culture we have inherited from our ancestors becomes our cultural heritage. In every country, there are number of fairs and festivals, which becomes a part of cultural heritage of the country. During these periods, the people celebrate it on a grand scale. People meet and greet each other and they enjoy. Thank you.